everyone. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by Speedstream. I'm Jim Cardle. Whether in Texas, somewhere else across America, or frankly anywhere on the globe, it's hard not to be confronted with issues confronting the Middle East of war, terrorism, and the like. Yishai Fleischer is the program director for Voice of Israel Radio Network. He's also a contributor to the Jerusalem Post as well as JewishNews.com. Is the Middle East conflict a subject that can be fit into a nutshell and can ever be solved? We're going to try and find out and are pleased to visit with Yishai Fleischer of the Voice of Israel Radio Network today. Yishai, thanks for joining us. <laughs> How are you, Jim? It's good to be with you. Well, I mentioned a, a couple of things there in the introduction. You're well known in the nation of Israel. You have been spreading the word about the conflicts both through the Middle East and now over here in the United States. Congratulations on vacationing in Texas, by the way. But let me start off with a, a bit of an overall question, if I can, and, and that has to do simply with the conflict itself. It goes back decades, centuries, uh, but for Americans wanting to grasp the Middle East conflict in a nutshell, what is the goal, perhaps is the way to put it, of the anti-Israeli forces, in your opinion? Well, it's just that. It's anti-Israeli, anti-Israel. And um, we have a small country in the Middle East, we feel very lucky to be living in a time where we're reconstituting, returning, in gathering into a land that we were evicted from 2,000 years ago by the Romans. We were dispossessed from our land, and we're an ancient people returning back to our ancestral homeland and building up not only what we had, but something even better, a very exciting country, really a country that is a light onto the nations when it comes to all the values that civilization holds dear, if it's jobs clean water, upward mobility, women's mm -hmm. rights, uh, a normal, normal country in the Middle East. Um, and its first goal, of course, is to defend the Jewish people who have been persecuted wherever we've been, and uh, including in Arab countries and Christian countries all over the world. Uh, that culminated with the Holocaust that happened in the 40s of the last century. Now uh, we have a country of our own that has uh, the ability to defend itself. It has a lot of religious significance to many, uh, but its first goal is to make sure that Jews are no longer going to be persecuted the way they were. They're going to live in safety, they're going to have their children, they're going to educate them the way we want to educate them, and we're going to be able to defend ourselves to the fullest extent that our state allows. There are, uh, just recently it's come to light, there are approximately 22, 24 Muslim nations across the country across the globe, pardon me, there's one Jewish state. Um, many are questioning whether or not, in fact, the Muslim goal of pushing Israel into the sea is uh, ever going to come to a stop. What is your opinion from the Israeli point of view of whether or not the conflict is justified, the lay of the land there, as you're surrounded by the Muslim uh, way of life in the Middle East? Well, the bad news is, is that if we do face eternal war, uh, if that's what we have to face, we will face it. Meaning to say, we're not going anywhere. And uh, it may be that our uh, Arab neighbors may never come to the conclusion of how wonderful it is to have their own cousins come back and repopulate uh, their ancestral land. The truth is, is that even the Quran itself talks about the Jewish people returning to the land of Israel. So I think it's in, in everybody's interest to have this uh, a country uh, flourish and thrive and be a beacon of so many values that are just good for people. You could call it Western, you could call it civilization. If you don't like those words, let's just use a simple term. It's good for people. Um, we are ready to face that onslaught, that continuous onslaught. It is our sincere hope that we don't have to continue in that path. One correction, though, is that while our local enemies are Arab countries, there are many European countries, Norway, um, Germany sometimes, sometimes forces out of England, sometimes forces out of France, sometimes forces even out of the United States, are not so commensurate with the idea of the flourishing and thriving Jewish state. They want to undermine our success there. Uh, I believe, actually, uh, a, a recurring theme, even that's uh, a meme that's said over and over again, even in this country, 
which is that the only way forward is a two-state solution, is actually something that subtly seeks to undermine the, the, the strategic strength of, of, of Israel. If we take our tiny country, divided into yet another Arab country, a 23rd Arab country in our region, which has been already proven that if it would have that landmass, would turn into a terrorist state, that would be a big mistake. Israel's got to be big. It's got to be strong. Here at Texas, in Texas people understand there's something to having space, there's something to being strong. People of the Middle East respect strength. Israel's got to be strong, and it should not be weakened. Uh, even when uh, there are calls in this country to divide up that tiny, less than New Jersey-sized country into, into another subdivision and create a Palestinian state on the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people, it is in the end going to be extremely destructive. And therefore, we stand opposed to that supposed uh, peace, peace solution. It is not solution. It is a peace solution. And in the end, it will only bring pieces and shambles. Uh, Israel's got to remain united. The minorities, like Arabs, that live amongst us uh, can have uh, liberties, can have equalities, uh, but certainly uh, Israel's got to stay as a Jewish state. Jerusalem has to stay united. And I think most Americans understand that, and therefore they're at odds with what the administration or other forces in the United States tell them, that it's a great idea to divide up Jerusalem, a great idea to divide up Israel. It's not a great idea, and it's time to walk away from that policy uh, that policy, that policy idea that is the only one that's being told. It's the only way forward. That's what we're being told. And I could say to the watchers of this program that if anybody tells you that's the only way forward, you could pretty much know it's, there's other ways that they don't want to talk about. And that, that way that they don't want to talk about is a strong and united Israel. Well, uh, speaking of, of a way forward and a little bit uh, more 30,000 foot view, let's talk, if we can, for a second. You mentioned a, a state being added, uh, how a state may be determined. What do you all as Israelis and the peers that you're visiting with on the Voice of Israel network view the perhaps unnecessary, unwanted interaction with us Americans, our diplomats, our ambassadors? Give us an opinion, if you would, of an Israeli feelings towards help, or maybe it's not viewed as help, of American interaction? Look, America's a great friend of Israel's, and I think really the people of the United States are great friends of Israel. Okay. And people are uh, true, and they're warm, and they have a natural inclination to like Israel because of the connection of the Bible. Because as I was driving down here, I went through a place called Hebron, and I was married in the original Hebron. There are places in this country called Bethel. You know, I lived for many years in the original Bethel. And I live today in the original Jerusalem. For yeah. those Texans who may, may not be aware, from Dallas to Austin on Highway 35, Hebron, Texas. That's right. right. I, I stopped into the town and took a picture with Hebron Valley Elementary oh uh, just to, to get a sense of that connectivity. So there's a real natural connection. On the other hand, you know, when it comes to, to governments, they have other interests. And many people need, feel the need to appease other oil-producing countries, energy-rich countries. And as Providence would have it, those energy-rich countries um, are very poor in their relationship to Israel. They're jealous. They have also religious inclinations against Israel. They, they believe that all these lands should be Muslim. And they have a, they have a problem with the Jewish state amongst them. And so you have even forces in the United States that side uh, with an anti-Israel uh, country or organization or even company. And so not everything that will come out of the United States government actually represents what the people of America would like to see. An example of that is that the United States government does not, represent, does not recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Does not recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And I believe that most Americans, when they hear that, they're shocked. They're shocked because they certainly believe that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and that the United States, the best friend Israel has, should recognize that. But it doesn't always because it needs to concede a little bit to Arab countries that have a lot of money and a lot of sway and a lot of power. You mentioned before sitting down your, <coughs> your son's birth certificate has as a city Jerusalem as a state blank. That's right. Uh, Interesting his, example I don't think many folks will understand. His U.S. passport... Uh, he is stateless in terms of his birth. 
He's a citizen of Israel, a citizen of the United States, but he was born in Jerusalem. It's a place without a country. Why? Because the State Department does not want to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And that's shocking to most Americans. So when you talk about the interaction that Israel has with, uh, with America, it's mostly positive, but there are moments of negativity. Uh, some in Israel also perceive the current administration as being not so friendly to, to Israeli interests. Um, and then there's the issue of aid. And Israel gets about $3 billion of aid every year from the United States. Uh, and that cuts two ways. On the, on the one hand, it really does help develop important technologies like the Iron Dome system, which shoots down rockets. Imagine being able to shoot a rocket mm -hmm. with another rocket. It's an incredible mm -hmm. thing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's important to note that most of that money that goes to Israel actually comes back and is spent in America as part of the contractual clauses that you have to spend it in America, this money. And so therefore, it's a, it's a way to actually help American companies. Be that as it may, uh, I believe that uh, foreign aid to Israel is not such a good idea. At this time, I want to thank the United States for all the help that it's given us up to this point, but I do think it's important to spread our wings and fly. And, you know, we have a saying here in America, in New Hampshire, live free or die. Mm -hmm. And uh, Israel has got to have that as well. We've, we've grown up. We are now a strong economy on our own. And we must have, we should have cooperation and great relationship with the United States, but not uh, a situation where we feel like we're a puppet state and somebody else is the puppeteer. That's not healthy for anybody. And, um, and then uh, interests give sway uh, to, to the real feelings that, that the United States people have. So I really want to have a relationship that's people to people. Uh, and government to government, we have to have some healthy distance, some checks and balances to make sure uh, that it's not corrupted. And I think that sometimes it is corrupted. You mentioned some of the latest developments. I want to get to the, to the very latest. Again, folks, I want to thank you for joining us for this edition of Texas Insider TV. We're visiting with Ishai Fleischer from the Voice of Israel radio network. Ishai, a final question or two has to do with the most current and latest developments. Uh, a lot of folks have been seen, whether it be through social media or even some of the American mainstream media, this movement of ISIS through the Muslim world, beheadings, barbaric behavior. I know you're coming uh, as a guest today to present the Israeli perspective, but what is the, is the overall feeling in the Middle East? Are there any other Arab beliefs or Arab countries that are afraid of ISIS? Is the, uh, Israel got an official position? It seems like such a huge development, eye-opening development. Talk about that, if you would, for a minute. I think the only thing that's different about ISIS than all the other jihadist groups is their level of carnage and, and ferocity and their media savvy. Uh, they want to make sure that you see images of beheadings. The truth is, is that beheadings and that kind of business has been around for a long time. Uh, jihadist fighters in Syria have been doing the same thing. Um, but these guys, ISIS, or, or now just the Islamic State, they are savvy. They have also done very smart things uh, in terms of, you may not think of it that way, but they're also quite business-minded. Uh, they have captured dams, they have captured hydroelectric dams, they have captured banks, and they're selling electricity back to host countries. They've they, captured a lot of American-made military equipment sure, as well. and that gives them more and more power. Uh, so they're a new group uh, out of, uh, born out of the Syrian revolution. Um, but they're not really very different than what's happening all over the Muslim world today. Uh, in terms of Israel, look, we send a message to all the jihad, which is that we're going to stand firm and that you will not be able to uh, depose us or move us. We are in our ancestral soil. We have uh, the strongest army in the Middle East. We're proud of that. I can only wish it to become stronger. Uh, with regarding to uh, how Christians, for example, are being treated by ISIS, it's not very different than how Egyptians have been treating the Copts, the Christian Copts, or how the Lebanese uh, Shiite groups have been treating the uh, French and fr the, 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 fr the Maronite French uh, Christian community that's there. Okay. And all over the Middle East, Christians have been persecuted for a long time. Uh, Americans have to think long and hard if do they want to get involved in this or, or not. Um, we, of course, will strike at ISIS if they dare strike at us. 
Um, but the Arab world is going through changes. They're asking themselves questions. Certainly, in places like Egypt, there was an Islamic revolution and then a counter-Islamic revolution. Okay. Basically, General al-Sisi is there to say we can still be Arab and Muslim, but we have to have a civilized society. And he pushed back on the Muslim Brotherhood, back on people like Hamas, back away from people like ISIS. And there's definitely a palpable fear amongst uh, Arab countries that uh, they're going to be more jihadized than they are today. The question is, should we really get involved? You know, it is an internal Arab question uh, and Muslim question. And... Um, I only hope that the outrageous behavior of ISIS will, and I'm cynical about it, but I, I do hope that it will spawn a new consciousness in the Arab world that says, enough, enough of this. It's time to go towards uh, building and not towards destroying. Uh, sp speaking of some, some finality, one final question uh, as I was preparing you and I were visiting prior to sitting down here the old 1967 or so proclamation out of the Muslim world regarding Israel of no negotiation, no recognition, no peace. Is that something that Americans should still remember today or do we have the future of no peace uh, as you see it? It's important to know that Israel will continue to survive whether we have peace or don't have peace. And, and we want solutions, but it's not a state of emergency. If there isn't a solution, we keep going. And that's, that's a very important concept, not to kind of rush it, not to kind of make a, make a shotgun marriage here. If it's not working out, it's not working out. We have to continue uh, to be strong. Uh, in the Arab world today, there is uh, secret relationships with Israel, business relationships with the Emirates, and, and there is definitely a, some level of cooperation. The problem in the Arab world is that they can't say it out loud. It's a very judgmental society, uh, which they, if, if anybody is perceived to be friendly to Israel, he's castigated. Um, or worse. Or worse. And um, that's why we have such excellent relations with, with people who understand our, uh, our value. Today also Israel is making new relationships with people like China and India. Uh, cultures that recognize that we too, the Jewish people, are an ancient culture that they respect. There are new superpowers on the horizon, new economic superpowers certainly. And we're making relationships with them. The threat of being boycotted is something we undermine by creating technology that goes all over the world. By having a book, a bestseller called the Bible that reaches the whole world by being a very friendly country and a civilized country that, that wants to give Arab rights, people rights, and basically be a bastion of, of, of civilization in the Middle East. Uh, we're doing our best and the forces that want to destroy us they simply will run up against an iron wall. And the forces that want to shake hands and move forward they will find a ready partner. Well speaking of civilized and ready partners we're gonna leave it there and let you get out the door continuing to meet with Texas elected officials and some of your supporters here in Texas. Folks, Ishai Fleischer, Program Director for Voice of Israel. Ishai, we appreciate you coming by. Thank you, Jim.